north our adventurer runs, as far away from town as possible. The fear of the recent events really gripped her. She would never quite be the same after seeing her hometown like that. Such horrible people, who could do such a thing to such peaceful villagers? Our goal to the journey to the far northeast still stands. We would like to visit our friends there. But in order to make it that far, first we must make a few rest stops and see if we can help the local townsfolk with these bandits. We are heading just north to the small tavern on the outskirts of this hamlet. Let's see if we can find anybody who can give us some more information about City Strife Palm and the troublemakers that were ravaging our hometown. That looks like a tavern. Let's walk inside and see. Right away we hear a prophet saying, Worse up is pleased, and another broad-nosed human monk discussing that mastering the forces of nature would glorify us in the eyes of the world. Something about a savannah titan must be terrifying. We found this human swordsman who seems impatient with us, but we greet them all the same. We say, hello, my name is Bora Learned Walk, and they say, ah, hello, I'm Adith Clench Searches. Hello, Adith. I'm going to speak with the human soldier and ask them about a specific individual. We are going to ask them about City Strife Palm, and City Strife Palm is a warlord, the more you know. We already knew that. However, let's see if we can figure out where they are. Let's ask for directions to the same person. CT Strife Paul. They say Death Crystal is in the New Desert. I'm assuming Death Crystal is either a lair or a camp. One of the two. Let's open this back up and have another peek. Let's ask for de directions to Death Crystal, which seems like a very inviting, wonderful place. They say that Death Crystal is a day's travel to the east, and we just we discover a detailed description. I'm going to take a peek at them and see if they are a skilled swordsman, as well as a novice fighter in general. Not the most skilled. Is there somebody a little bit more skilled in the art of fighting in this region? Well, we do have a Baroness Consort, how about her? Nah, just competent and novice, just like ourselves. Well, in that case, let's have a speak with this lad and ask if they would be interested in coming with us. Maybe they're too nervous, as I noticed in their character sheet, but of course we can always ask. Join us on adventures, and they say, ha, such enthusiasm. Let's see if they guide us, perhaps, to the location of Death Crystal. They don't seem particularly keen to direct us to a location, so instead I will simply tell a joke. And they say, don't waste my time, and I tell them to screw off, klutz. Let's speak with somebody more important. Over here, I've, I've spotted a Baroness Consort. We're going to have a discussion with her. We're going to ask her if she would like to be our guide. Maybe she will be more flexible on the subject. We don't need to ask her, as she was probably overhearing the conversation anyway. So let's just jump right down to the point. Would you like to be our guide to a location of Death Crystal? I will agree to guide you if you lead me to glory and death. I'm going to ask them, since they appear to be keen on the concept of death, about their emotions on the thought of violence. Let's see if this is somebody who would be a good um, party member for a more, on a more permanent level. I'm going to state that I value peace, just so that she understands the kind of person that she's dealing with here. And she says that she concurs, which means we must bring peace through the only mean necessary, removing all of your enemies from existence. We're going to right-click on her and see if we can snoop about a little bit. We can see that she has a spouse named Theater Feed, but she also has a lover named Honor Loot. Let's ask her about her lover. To try and free up the information so that I have the ability to speak with Lurit, let's ask her about her. Lurit says, I am Baroness Concert. I once wandered the wilds. So she was an adventurer like you until she got a husband to the ring finger? I'm, and a lover far away. One of the two. Not sure which happened first. We're going to ask about ourselves. And she says that we are a pleasure to speak with. Well, that is lovely. I'm gonna tell a joke, and she even thinks that we're funny. So, with an, our new companion in tow, I would like to point something out. Up here, in the top left, we can now see E-S-E, and it says G-U-I. That is the location our friend here has agreed to guide us to. I'm just gonna go up to this human swordsman, and unprompted, ask if they would like to join us on adventures. Of course, we know how this went the first time, but, uh, in fact, he's impatient and agitated, but what's the harm in asking one final time? Join us on adventures. And they say, ah, such enthusiasm, goddamn pansy. How about you, down here, with the club, the maceman, who is neutral and patient. I greet them, and they say, hi, I'm Ote Jungle Fa Phasers? Fayers, and ask if they would be interested in joining us on adventures, specifically to go after these bandits that were raiding my hometown. And they say, ha, such enthusiasm. I think it's time for us and our newfound party of adventurers to head out into the wildlife and start beating up some animals. And before you start saying that Peta would love this game, trust me, they would. This game's great for the whole family. 
So right here, this is probably our location. We didn't have to go too far, but what you will note is that very quickly your goblin is going to start getting tired. But also, we're going to need to train a little bit, because we're quite green still in the combat. You might remember from the first episode when we were fighting, it was a lot of missing. Um, and our guide only will hang out with us for a day or a few. So we should probably travel along the overworld, chatting with our guide, and find some wild animals to pick on. In fact, they're currently asking us about dealing with a beast from the wild. And I'm going to, well, ask for directions to it. Strangled Numbras is far to the northeast. You might remember this particular uh, giant wolf from the previous episode. Some people were talking about it. At least we have directions now. Something to do in the future. Oh, hey, look, emus. Or are those ostriches? Those are, in fact, ostriches. Well, regardless, I'm sure I can whip them to pieces. This will be some good training for my, for my goblin. The combat is very similar to when we were fighting earlier, except these won't be fighting back as much. So um, I will mostly be bump attacking, which can be done by either right-clicking on the creature you would like to whap, or alternatively, just simply moving into them with the arrow keys or something similar. Now, careful with creatures that get moving quickly, for when they get moving, they may be hard to catch. A way you can catch up with something much quicker is by hitting M on the keyboard, and if you're not lying down, which I currently am for some reason, you can then hit M on the keyboard and then move your movement speed up to sprint. Keep in mind, it will take a couple steps to catch up to full speed, and also, once you're at full speed, you'll then probably take a few turns to slow down. You'll also get tired quicker while sprinting, so make sure that you keep track of when you are sprinting and when you are not. Consider this like your Rocky training montage, Dwarf Fortress Edition. Every adventurer needs to do this at some point, or you will likely die horribly in your first real encounter. Now, as I'm bullying the poor local wildlife, I'm gonna hit Z on the keyboard. This pops up the character screen. If you go to skills and go to combat, you can see your skills as they develop. Dabbling means you don't have a level. That's essentially level zero. It means you've done it once. It doesn't mean that you actually have any skill in it whatsoever. While we do have competent fighter and adequate dodger, as a combat goblin, we're pretty horrible. Based on the sound effects, you can tell what the last attack was. Whip means that we're obviously whipping them. Thwunk sound is our shield hitting them. Or a physical blow. And this is also where I should mention the combat preferences. Combat preferences are a bit advanced, but can still be quite useful which can also be found by hitting capital C. Combat options are a selection of different options that tell you how you attack, such as when you default attack by bumping, do you wrestle? Do you charge? Do you default attack without charging or wrestling? Now, or just simply based on the opponent. This is based on opponent size. If you're taller, it might be better to charge. If you're smaller, it might be better to wrestle. You may not want to dodge out of the way for some reason due to creatures charging you on a thin walking space. I do have a more advanced tutorial where I go into all of these different details. It is called Melee Combat Basics. It can be found in the quick tutorial series. I recommend you watch that if you would like a better overview. But just keep in mind that combat options while bump attacking can very much save your arse if you are in uh, a sticky situation against the right type of enemy. So be careful with your options because if you use the wrong one, you may just die young. It appears that our friend here has improved their fighting and they are very satisfied by this. Let's have a peek at them and see what their fighting skill has moved up to. Well, they've simply just improved it. And also, apparently, realize the nuances of introspection. I guess we must have helped with that. As for us, we don't feel too satisfied, but we have become a novice lasher, which is a very good start, if nothing else. Let's continue moving towards the future enemy that we are hopefully going to turn into tiny little pieces of pulp soon. As we travel, a normal adventurer would get hungry. We are not currently, because we are a goblin. However, we are also not tired, which is a good thing. It hasn't even been a day yet. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our inventory and we are going to scroll down. For a normal adventurer, you're gonna wanna eat and drink. So we're gonna eat some of this brain that we happen to have in our inventory. If you would like to skip some clicks, you can also click this button. This is eat or drink. And it just simply pops up all of the items that are easily accessible in your inventory. So we're gonna drink some water. Or you can just press E on the keyboard to open up the eating and drinking menu. Any questions? If so, leave them down in the comments section. A friend of ours is still reminding us of this wolf. Well, unfortunately, we've got bigger problems. In this case, in the form of bandits. These bandits are south of us. I think we should try and get another encounter before we get to them. Our friend is now complaining about the rain. I agree. I gotta love the ambience, though.
There's also another option that has been added since I started recording the first episode, where you can right click on a location, click path to here, and then simply tap A to continue the action. If you'd like to finish the action immediately, you can hit C, which will then jump you to the location. But apparently we're in conflict with something. I'm not sure what though. It's pretty neat actually, not a bad little feature. Our friend is continuing to complain about the rain, except now they're complaining to us about the rain. We can see that our character is still not tired and our guide is telling us to head due east. Peeking at the overworld, it appears that there's some sort of military camp there, probably besieging this poor town. Continuing to head south, south, southeast. And before we arrive, it appears that we have some more training opportunities. Might as well take it while it's still standing there in two legs with a long neck. Make it stick its neck into the ground, as ostriches tend to. We're going to go for the neck, hoping to uh, slow down its attempted runaway. And don't forget to take your character off of sprint when you're traveling in the overworld. I definitely remembered to do that and did not edit it out, I swear. Then move over here and kick the ostrich in the neck from behind with your left foot. Give them a whip as well. And then we're just going to begin bump attacking to clear up the rest of the combat. I then jump towards the next ostrich by clicking the jump button down here and then selecting a landing location and go for the other ostrich. Because not only are we two are we training ourselves? but we are training our friend here as well. Our companion needs some skill too. I'm gonna try and stand up. We're gonna once again try and hit this one in the leg, although it appears that it's pretty unlikely we'll hit it. So we're gonna have to tune back up our running speed to a sprint, and um, it seems to be dis disappearing at a pretty rapid clip. So let's slow down the run and, um, well, move towards the camp now, which is just due east. Let's check our friend here. Did you take any injuries? No, you didn't. Well, that's good. What is this? A frail kobold bowman. I'm going to scream at it. I'm going to greet the listener and say, my name is Bora. It sits there in silence like the stupid creature that it is, for it doesn't even understand me. I'm going to ask the creature to join me on adventures. Join me. So I don't need to turn you into, well, a very small mess of blood. We punch the frail kobold in the left hand from behind. This thief will no longer be able to harass the local villages and steal stuff that definitely we stole already from somebody else perfectly legitimately. In fact, we're better at it than them. Us goblins, we should be the ones allowed to do this, not the kobolds. We have become a skilled fighter in the midst of conflict, and I still feel no terror. Our character seems to be much more interested in punching rather than whipping, so I'm going to go out of my way to use my whip here. I would like to train up as a lasher, after all. Whips are very effective once you become extremely skilled with them, but while you're learning, they're not always the best. Although I did lash the frail kobold bowman in the upper arm with a silver whip, jamming the bone through the right shoulder and chipping the right shoulder's bone which pulled the right shoulder, shattering the bone, and shattering the bone. And a ligament was torn. I can get an attack of opportunity if I scratch it, but I think we'll just whip instead. Because we're here for training more than anything. I lashed it in the neck, which bruised it. I lashed it in the arm, which appears to have jammed the bone through the right shoulder. And then I lashed them again in the upper leg with the silver whip. And lashed the frail kobold bowman in the right lower arm from the side with my silver whip. And then I get an opportunity attack with my whip for the arm, which has struck the kobold down. I lashed the frail kobold bowman in the lower body with the bronze whip, and the injured part was crushed. Death, it's all around us, truly horrifying. I begin a conversation with our friend. I say, "Light is it, life is in a word, death, and they say, thank you for all you do. I'm going to express my emotions, my satisfaction upon improving fighting, and they talk about, once again, the beast from the wild, Zata. That must be their quest. I do hope one day they are able to succeed and complete it. The kobold didn't have much, but they did have a quiver on them, which is actually useful to me, so I will take it. I'm then going to press W on the keyboard and click on the key on the quiver. This would allow me to wear the quiver. Or alternatively, I could open my inventory, locate the quiver in my inventory, and click wear this item. I now put on the quiver. I'm then going to open up my inventory again, and I'm going to go to my bolts. All 10 of them. And I'm going to click put this item in container, and I'm going to click the quiver. So if I do pull up my crossbow anytime soon, I will then be able to fire them out of my quiver. Just as a pro tip, I'm going to put away my weapons, and then I'm going to press R on the keyboard. I put away the weapons, of course, by hitting Q on the keyboard. Scrolling down in the inventory, I'm going to find my copper crossbow. And I'm going to click 
remove this item, which takes it out of the container, and it's now in my hand. So now as you can see, I have a crossbow in my hand. Now is a perfect opportunity for some crossbow target practice. As you can see, the kobolds are dodging. Gotta learn at some point. Pressing F on the keyboard allows us to fire our bronze bolt. This one actually stuck, struck the, cro the kobold crossbowman. If you wish to use the mouse to do it, firing crossbow bolts does take quite some time. You can click on the arrow icon and then click on the fire button. This one just dropped its bow on the ground. Kobolds are a very good early mob to go after if you're just looking for some training and also maybe even a little bit of gear. And there we go. The bronze bolt got lodged firmly in the wound. While I didn't get the kill on this one, it appears our friend did. Now we're going to go over to the victim, I mean the kobold who genuinely fought back very hard, yes, and click on get the bronze bolt. I'm then going to press P on the keyboard and click on the bronze bolt and put it into my quiver. But make sure I'm not putting it into the quiver on the ground, so instead I'm going to move one tile off of them and put in the rami quiver. Then I'm going to see if I can spot my, col my bolt that I fired all the way past it, which I'm not seeing. And I'm going to take a peek at our friend here. You didn't get any injuries, did you? L ability to stand lost. Oh my gosh. Well, we better wait for the night. We're going to rest until dawn, just north of where the camp is. It's a good long sleep. I am not drowsy. And it appears our friend no longer has any health problems. I'm going to put away the crossbow and take out my weapons again. I'm then going to open up my inventory. I'm going to drink some water. And they say our time on the... Windy land is so brief, begone fear. Well, it appears that my water is actually made of ice. So what we're going to do is make a campfire. The campfire allows us to right-click on said campfire, or do so when our hands are free, or we can hit capital I on the keyboard. Capital I on the keyboard allows us to interact with an item in an advanced way. You can also do this from the inventory screen. I'm going to click on the water skin and then heat it next to the campfire. Once it's been heated, it will have water in it again. We then will need to refill it, but don't need to worry too much about this until we are a little bit closer to the nearest water supply. Our friend is fine, so let's head south. Our brave adventurers, after a night's rest, move directly towards the encampment. The great, or at least theoretic, the bandit leader is City Strifepalm, warlord. Hopefully we can find them swiftly and assassinate them in their sleep. I'm going to click this button down here, which allows us to sneak. If you would like to know exactly how effectively you're sneaking, hit M on the keyboard. This will tell you how quiet you are being. We are then going to set it to creeping, meaning we are now moving at the slowest possible speed. Hopefully our friend here doesn't blow our cover. A flying arrow strikes the muscular kobold swordsman in the lower body, tearing the muscle and tearing the guts through the linen tunic. A flying arrow strikes a kobold. So we are here in combat, or being made aware of combat, that I am not currently seeing. We can also see more fights go through. So maybe these bandits are actively at war currently with this co with these kobolds. Our friend here also apparently has a lot of blood on them because they're making a trail of blood behind them. Maybe it's raining or something. Let's continue heading south towards the camp. Seems that the camp that we are being guided towards is directly east right now, so we are going to head east. And um, it appears that kobold arrows are flying and um, striking somebody. And our friend says, I cannot just stand by. This might require an answer. You give them a look. It appears that we have achieved no damage just yet. But arrows are being fired at us. And one actually struck me. So let's see. What's our status? Slight pain ability to stand has been lost. Well, this might not be the fight of ours. Perhaps we should move away from this site. Inspecting the mini-map here, we can take a real quick peek at what's right beneath us. This camp appears to be a kobold camp. And right over here to the east is another kobold camp, and right there is a human camp of Death Crystal. Let's go assault this kobold camp for some extra XP. We're currently fine, so let's check our movement options, because we are currently sneaking, and speed ourselves up a little bit, and head towards this kobold, who is now firing arrows at us. It is a kobold. Let's see what their skills are. They're a skilled bowman, but kind of novice aside from that. I'm going to put away my shield, and I'm going to press R on the keyboard, and scroll down to my crossbow, and I'm going to remove it, which then takes it out. 
I'm then going to fire a bolt directly at this kobold. I have a bit of a sniper war. It appears to have um, zipped away pretty quickly, and then um, there's a dead kobold down here uh, with an iron spear lodged in it. Maybe the kobolds are fighting once again. Uh, for those of you who don't know, because kobolds have a contextual language, most of the time they can't understand one another, which leads to some rather large confusion, which can lead to violent ends uh, amongst kobold camps. I'm going to put my crossbow away and move kind of in the direction of this kobold camp. There's one right there, skinny kobold crossbowman. This also leads to it being rather difficult to um, communicate with them. This appears to be all of their stuff. Let's see what kind of loot we can uh, garner from these, um, well, silly travelers. There's a large ro rope reed plate and uh, some stuff that I can't equip. There is a large cabochon here, which I'm going to get and put into my backpack. I do find a copy of Victory by Trample Plan, which I'm going to pick up. I'm going to press capital I on the keyboard and give it a read. Written on the item is, is uh, Victory by Tra Trample Plan by Olam uh, Athinbo. It concerns Castle Trample Plan. The writing has a very serious tone, but it's passable. I think I will drop it. Doesn't seem to be something I need to take with me. It's mostly large clothing. These goblins must have been stealing from the humans for a while. Must have been my people, in fact. Plenty of gems, and halberds, and various other weapons. It's a real shame I can't equip any of this stuff, as it does seem rather nice. I did find another book, which I'll read real quick. Keep in mind, if you don't have any skills in reading from the get-go, you will not be able to read in the slightest. All it really does is it gives you interest and makes your character happy. Also, gains you some knowledge. And then, theoretically, if you learn to write, you could then copy those books after the fact. Since the kobold camp appears to have completely scattered, we are going to head over in this direction towards the actual target of our mission. I'm going to drop down, and we are going to sleep until dawn, as we are probably getting rather tired. We feel uneasy. We're being ambushed. I do quickly pull out my whip, and I eat some brain. I hear it helps with the smarts. Our friend says a beast from the wilds is going after their people. Well, I don't think that is particularly much of a concern to us as we are currently being ambushed, but it wasn't that bad of an ambush, so. But the ambush appeared to leave rather quickly, and this gives us an opportunity to rest until dawn, right next to the enemy's bandit camp. Dawn was very close by, so we are going to drop out of fast travel, check our inventory, we are fine, and it is time for us to head south, southeast, and, uh, well, the warlord screams, identify yourself to our friend here, at which point we very quickly try to close the distance. We're going to swap to a sprint. We are not going to identify ourselves for clarity, and we're going to give this person a good look. This is enemy here. We're going to start a conversation with them and greet them. I say, hello, my name is Laura Burnwalk, and they say, I am City, Strife Paul. The other conversations are the other two chatting, and I'm going to, before I open up direct combat with them, I'm going to ask them to join me. On adventures and they say I'm sorry my duty is here I'm going to ask them what is your profession I was once a woodcutter I am a warlord how did you end up like this we're gonna ask them how they're feeling sometimes I just don't like somebody and honestly I, I have to relate with this warlord's feeling that's probably why they go to raid our town I'm gonna ask them about any any troubles and they say well let's see their non-committal answer I'll lead to assume means that they are the cause of them I'm going to accuse them of being a night creature, and I say, Whosoever would blight the world, praying hopelessness, fear me. I call you a child of the night, and I will slay you where you stand. And they say, what is this madness? Calm yourself. I move to strike. We're going to go for a strike on the upper body, and I'm, I'm going to go for a quick swipe with my shield. And I missed them. Checking their combat, they are quite adequate and a skilled spearman, and also a legendary woodcutter. I would assume that their story was true. We are still just simply adequate, but hopefully adequate will be enough for us to do some decent dodging, and novice lashing will be enough for us to land a hit or two, better than the previous. Now, we are still talking with them, so I will be able to continue the conversation. I went to attack them, but the shot was blocked. They are recovering from attacking me with an iron spear. I don't have any attacks of opportunity, but I can get a easy strike, which is fairly solid on their left mandible. I'm going to try and whip them. You strike at them, but the shot was deftly parried by an iron spear. Meanwhile, our friend here is saying, I've been rained on, and the warlord is saying, let us stop this pointless fighting. To which I say, goodbye. The warlord attacks me, 
but I jumped away. I move up a layer, and Lurit lashes the warlord in the neck from behind with her bronze whip, bruising the muscle and the upper spine's tissue. Our friend is talking to them, likely, and we go for an easy strike, which is very square on their head, and we whip them. We lash the warlord in the head from behind with our silver whip, bruising the muscle and fracturing the skull. Giving them a quick examination, we can actually see that they have no armor on, and it is just an iron spear that they are holding. I then move to go for their arm. We go for a lash. Lurit lashes the warlord city in the head with her bronze whip, bruising the muscle and jamming the skull through the brain and tearing the brain. The Thromo's fist city has been struck down after being knocked unconscious. And Lurit says, this is my fight too. There is no need to feel vengeful. I'm going to look at my friend here and begin a conversation. And I ask how the listener is feeling. And they say, how fleeting life has begun fear. I'm going to bring up a specific room or a person. I'm going to inquire about any troubles. And they continue to speak about the wolf. I'm going to ask about the whereabouts of this wolf. And they say, probably on the move or deep underground. And I don't know for sure. I'm going to ask them to join me and lead me to this wolf. Or just simply on adventures. And they say, I, sh I will agree to travel with you if you lead me to glory and death. Once guide, now just simply a travel buddy. Let's finish off these bandits once and for all. Identify yourself, they shout at a, dif at a distance. This one is a bowman. Not entirely certain where they are, but hopefully I can spot them quickly. I am sprinting. I should slow down to a walk before I tire myself out. Having a peek in this stuff, it all appears to be large as well, which is a damn shame if I do say so myself. Probably why these bowmen were naked. Heading down the hill, we are seeing the rest of their followers. Our companion appears to be introducing themselves. They keep shouting, identify yourself. I'm going to move up to this one and start a conversation with it. I'm going to bypass the greeting and brag about my violent acts. I have taken down an ostrich while stalking in the new desert. That wasn't the particular act of violence I was referring to, but uh, I'm going to summarize a conflict in which City Strifepalm was slain by Lurit, our friend here, and they say, City was slain. That is terrible. I'm going to ask about the listener's profession, and they say, I am a soldier of the warlord Urum. Can you lead me to battle and a warrior's death? I ask this person if they would like to join us on adventures, and they say, I will agree to travel with you if you lead me to glory and death. Welcome, traveler. How about the remainder of the bandits? This one is suddenly joining hostilities. I'm going to demand that they yield, and they say, I yield, I yield. We continue the conversation. I ask them to join us, for they know that, I have, that our companion here has slain their leader. I ask them to join us on adventures, and they say, I will agree to join you on adventures if you lead me to glory and death. Viewing this bowman, well, they do in fact have bows. Our two genderless warriors are now alongside us. It is good to have friends when you go off to fight in Dwarf Fortress Adventure Mode. I do hope that you found this episode useful. In this episode, unlike the first, we decided to take the path of violence. With our new companions, we can greet them and find out that this one is named Sebschuss, Worker Shower. Don't try to throw your weight around, tough guy. They seem to be. These particular creatures of the night were created by necromancers. I'm going to make a flattering remark, and they don't seem to enjoy that. Now that they are joining us, I can issue orders. Favor, request, or demand, or order. I can ask them to wait here, listen, yield in any combat situation, and that is very important, because we don't exactly know who they will get along with. But since we have friends now, I think it's time for us to sleep for eight hours, or at least until dawn, and take a good break. I hope that you enjoy these episodes of Adventure Mode. Since we are sleeping all day and then all night until dawn, you may not want to do this as a normal adventurer. But since we are a goblin and we don't need to eat or drink, it's not such a big deal. But something like this would actually be a really bad idea if you were a human. This party will continue in the next episode. If you are enjoying these episodes, take a look at this YouTube channel. I have a lot of tutorials and other information about Adventure Mode. If you would like to watch me live, you can find me over at twitch.tv slash blindirl as well as the save files for these Adventure Mode Let's Plays can be found over in the description of this video, in case you would like to play along. If you'd like to support episodes like these, you can do that over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash blindirl. That is where these episodes stay funded. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.